Well, okay. I'm just jumping right in. There's no other way to really to really deal with what I'm about to deal with than just jumping on in. All right. I'm talking tonight. You know, we we dealing with this whole predestination thing. We 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 are more than conquerors. You know, a lot of times we come at you guys and we're talking about, you know what I mean, the awesomeness that God has put in us and what God has done for us. And we're talking about, you know what I mean, walking in victory. We were talking about mastering, you know what I mean, our emotions and mastering our, our, our passions and mastering the temptations of the enemy. We talk about being more than conquerors, you know what I mean? And 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 that that has such a such a, a powerful presence and stance. But tonight, you know what I mean? Tonight, I want to talk to us not only about our identification as more than conquerors, and that's not what we're trying to become, that's who we are but literally the identity. This is, if I was gonna title this tonight, if I was gonna title this, I would simply entitle this one here, expressing your identity in Jesus Christ. It's one thing to discover who we are, who you are, what God has made you, what God is doing in you. And as, as Christians, as more than conquerors, the, the, the very power of God in us and, and understanding the glory and the splendor, understanding the, the, the very call of God on our lives to literally show the world the image of Jesus Christ. We taking on the characteristics of Jesus Christ. We embracing God's truth and then not only sharing that truth, but allowing the truth of God to change every area of our lives, bringing us from a place of greatness to greatness, from faith to faith, bringing us from, from being separated from God to now walking in union with God, from being an enemy of God to now being a friend of God, a child of God, from being separated from God to now being united with God. And that's exactly what is happening in you and in us. This is who we are. We're united with God. So today, we want to take all of what we've learned about what God is doing in our lives, all of the blessings, all of the power, all of the abilities of God, all of the characteristics of Jesus Christ that we begin to now, as we study the word of God, we see these characteristics, we see these attributes of Jesus Christ, and now we have a different mindset. What we see in Jesus, we can embrace that. That's us. That's what God has made us. That's what God is helping us to now come to terms with, to get peace with, and that's all about changing our identity. So now we want to come to a place where we not only know that we have all of this power, that we are all of this glory, that we are all of this splendor, this luster from God, now we want to be able to express it. And not express it, you know what I mean, like hit and miss. No, this is our identity. This is who we are. We are more than conquerors. And we are now literally coming to a place in our understanding of the truth of God that we choose to express the very identity of Jesus Christ, the characteristics of Jesus Christ. So we got to break down this word identity. And then we're going to, I'm telling you right now, in these, these dark times that we're living in, these crazy, perilous times that we're living in, okay. As you and I begin to embrace the characteristics of Jesus Christ, as we begin to look at not just the formulas of Jesus, not just the very way Jesus handles situations, okay? It's one thing to look at them and see them in the scripture, but then to become them, to accept these principles, to accept these character marks, these identification markers, and then say, okay, Lord, help me to express this in every area of my life. Help me to express your power. Help me to express your truth, your love, your wisdom, your knowledge. Help me to express your mastery in every area of my life. And that's where we are right now. We're turning a corner. We're literally coming to a place to where now we have it, we embrace it, and now we're expressing it on purpose. So now we're talking about identity. Who are we? We are more than conquerors. 
We broke that down. We know what we do. In the midst of every contest, conflict with the enemy, we are mastering this cat. We are defeating him. We are expressing the glory, the excellence. We're expressing the very attributes, the characteristics of Jesus Christ. So now, when we start talking about expressing the identity, I want to really quickly go to 1 John again, verse 4, verse 1 John 4, verse 17, okay? Because this, you know, when we start looking at the world and looking at their characteristics and looking at how they're expressing their identity in Satan, their identity in the ways of the world, it's almost vexing, you know what I mean? And, and we, we are different. You a child of God, you a Christian, you've embraced Jesus Christ, you, you've allowed the very word of God, the truth of God to become your identity. And now you're, you're thinking on the word of God, you're reading the word of God, you're now talking the principles of God, you're releasing the truth of God and all your different experiences and the different scenarios that you deal with at your job, in your family, in your relationships, whatever they are, you're now manifesting the Christ-like character. You're literally manifesting righteousness. You're literally manifesting the very essence and nature of God and the ways of God. You know what I mean? And so here, when you begin to manifest those ways and attributes of God, that identity of God, the identity of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the identity of Jesus Christ specifically, and you in those scenarios where 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 they where you're dealing with people, they they talking like the world, acting like the world, and 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 it begins to start vexing your spirit because as your spirit gets more in tune with God. The, the ways of the world ain't cute no more. The ways of the world, you know what I mean? It, it really, it ain't cool no more. It's like, ugh, uh, you know? And so, you know, as we now begin to express the identity of Christ, express the identity of the Father, express the identity of the Holy Spirit, just expressing the God identity. I'm, I'm telling you right now, okay, you're getting better and stronger you know who you are in Christ. Now you're starting to release that identity. You're starting to literally, you're talking different. You're thinking different. You're responding different to different stuff, different, different environmental conditions, different circumstantial situations, different, you know what I mean? Different experiences that Satan is coming against you with that God is allowing you to go through so that you can express the love of God. You can express the authority of God. You can express the truth of God. And the world needs it. Okay, so now watch this here. First John chapter 4, verse 17. Now I'm going to read this from the Amplified Version and listen to this. And, and, and watch this here. You're going to have to explain this to some people. You're going to have to explain this to some people. But God says, I'm giving it to you first. This is us. Look at this here. In this union and fellowship with him, talking about God, all right, love is completed and perfected with us. You know, our love for God, God's love for us, we're understanding God's love for us, and, and, and it's, it's maturing us. It's maturing you. The love of God, your understanding of the love of God is bringing a level of maturity in you, in your relationship with God, and it's also now causing you to see the world and the influence of Satan on the world for what it is. And as we continue to start expressing the identity of God and allowing the identity of God to really, really cause joy and peace in our lives, you know what I mean? The, the expression of the world and, and the expression of Satan through the world is really starting to kind of be displeasing. It's kind of like, you know what? That is such a turnoff, you know what I mean? And, and, and now, and then sometimes, you know what I mean? I know for me personally, I think back, man, I can't believe I was wilding out like that back in the day. And the closer you get to God, the closer you embrace and begin to mirror Jesus's identity and character, and the more you allow the Holy Spirit, when we, that's all of us now, when we allow the Holy Spirit to kind of check us and say, hey, you know, that's way, that's way over to the left. I need you to pull it back to the right. When we begin to allow God to, 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 to fertilize and cultivate and allow God to literally generate the power of the identity of Jesus Christ in our lives, when we allow God to generate the very truth of that, that revelation 
of the power of God and the power of God's identity in our lives, when we release our faith in that, God now starts changing things in our lives because you got to remember now, we are predestined to conform to the image of Jesus Christ or the identity of Jesus Christ. And as we do that, now we look back at Jesus and we see Jesus just manifesting victory over victory over victory. We see Jesus manifesting power over power over power, power over the enemy, victory over the enemy. In every circumstance and situation in life, Jesus is always walking on the top. For you and I, what does that mean to us? That means as we now identify and, and choose and desire to, uh, to manifest the identity of Jesus Christ, that means every area in your life has to end in victory. It has to end glorifying God. It has to end where when you pray and ask God to do something, I don't care how much the enemy comes at you, the end result is going to be you victorious, you manifesting the identity of God. So keep your faith strong in your understanding of that more than conqueror identity through Jesus Christ. Again, we're imitating Jesus. So now we start talking about this verse. And we start breaking this verse down a little bit. Look at this here. He says, in this union, this fellowship with God, this fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, love is completed and perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. With assurance and boldness to face him. We're going to face God with assurance and boldness because, look at this here, as he is, so are we in this world. So now we've learned the truth of the identity of God, we've embraced it. We've said, God, we choose your identity. We choose more than conqueror. We choose the very fruits and the very manifestation of the characteristics of a more than a conqueror. And that means, Jesus, we choose to not only be like you, but to have the same impact as you had and also the same victorious expression of God's glory and love and power over all the works of the devil. Now that is some good stuff. That's a good place and a good position to be in. And we have to renew our minds to that and believe that and know that that is what God is cultivating and developing in your life in every area that you and I, every area that we allow God access to, God is now causing us that he's causing us to manifest that more than conqueror attitude, that more than conqueror lifestyle, that more than conqueror blessing in our lives. And it is so that we can now master it and then teach others how to walk in it. OK, so watch this here. We're talking tonight about expressing our identity in Jesus Christ. And that's more than just knowing who you are. Now is walking it out living it out. It's literally in every scenario of life, we so dialed into God, we're so locked in and in tune to the Holy Spirit that we overcoming in every situation, that we, we catch in every opportunity to show forth the likeness of God, to show forth the likeness of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, let's go and break down this word identity, because then I want to go and look at St. John chapter 17, because it gets real clear. And I'm telling you, glory to God. Oh, sweet Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The best days of your life are not coming. It's here right now. These are the best days of your life because you're operating in the knowledge and the wisdom and the power of Almighty God. See, you've embraced that you are a conqueror, God's conqueror. You've embraced that you, as you look at the scripture as he is, so are we in this life. Now, that's a whole identity change. That's a whole, that's a whole paradigm shift in how you respond to life moving forward. And we're responding to life. You're responding. I'm responding to life as a conqueror. You, you know what I mean? You, you, you're going to have to understand that the changes that are taking place, and, and you're going to have to understand the changes that are taking place in your life is the hand of God working in you. And I know you see the changes. I know you, you sense the no nonsenseness. I know you sense the, 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 the focus and the, and the determination, that, that, that laser sharp expectation that, that, that you, are, you are in the will of God, that you are in the family of God, that you are in the plan of God. 
and and God is not only structuring, structuring and, and building power and, 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 and a new identity in you, but preparing you to teach others how to change that defeated, that negative, that satanic inspired attitude, change that into the attitude of a conqueror. Yeah, that's our job. You know what I mean? Once we get it, we got to share it. Okay, so watch this here. Identity. Check this out. The word identity means the distinguishing character or personality of an individual. Now, remember, we said that that personality is character under control. See, character and personality is the, is the sum total of what identity is. But when we break that down, Okay, you take all of the characteristics that you're learning about Jesus, all of the characteristics that you're learning about God, all of the characteristics that you learned about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Watch this here. When you now read through the Word of God and you start seeing how Jesus did things, right? And you start looking at the principles of how he dealt with people, how he dealt with Satan, how he dealt with circumstances in life, and you you pull those characteristics, those identity markers, those those personality traits of Jesus. That's how he dealt with things. The words that he spoke, the truth that he used in, in certain situations, you, you pull out how he responded. You pull out the wisdom, the knowledge. And when you say, okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use these precepts and principles. I'm going to use these same words, the same expectations of Jesus. I'm going I'm, I'm to mirror Jesus. You've changed your identity. You've taken on a new identity. No longer are you afraid in conflict, but you are fearless in conflict because you have a hope. You know that God is with you. You know that God is going to manifest, change, physically turn things around because that's what God promised. When the Father makes a promise like that, you believe it. It's just a matter of time going through the process that what you prayed for, because your faith is strong, your faith is great, and the, and the ability of God to do what you're praying for, God says, listen, I will work this thing out to completion. But you got to start believing that I've heard you and believing that it's done. Now, when you move through the process, you're going through the process with a whole new identity. You ain't worried. You're not full of stress. You're not full of anxiety. No, you're spending your time walking in the peace of God. Whoa, glory to God, hallelujah. Because the Bible says, when you go through the process, after you don't pray, you believe in God, the devil comes at you, he's trying to discourage you, trying to get you to quit. You sitting in the midst of the process, going through every step, and your mind is stayed on Jesus. Your mind is stayed on the Father God. Your mind is stayed on the Holy Spirit because you keep reading the word, you praising and worshiping God. God says, those that keep their mind stayed on me like that, I will keep them in perfect peace going through the process of attainment. See, you got to receive it spiritually. You got to receive it face value. God, I believe you promised me this. I believe it's done right now. Now you are now a receiver of the promise of God. Now you're going through the process. You've received it spiritually. Now you got to go through the process until your physical circumstance and situation is changed by the power of God, changed by the truth of God. And this all stays active. This all stays full of the motion and the momentum of God because your faith stays connected. And your faith will stay connected to God because you keep your mind renewed to the promise of God. You keep your mind and your spirit praising and worshiping God and thanking God. Now, your physical circumstances can come to a stall. Satan can put up a big fight and it looked like ain't nothing going on. You got to ignore that stuff. It's real. It's happening. The attacks of the enemy is happening, but you got to ignore that stuff. You can't let that stuff affect your emotions, your passions. You can't let those temptations of the devil trying to get you to think that your prayers is stalled out, that your prayers haven't been heard, that your prayers aren't being answered physically. You got to let that devil know, look, I know God heard my prayer spiritually. I know he heard my prayer the day I prayed. I know it's already done. And I'm going through the process. And you need to just back that stuff on up in Jesus' name. See, that's a whole different identity. That's a whole different expression 
of how to go through your process. You got perfect peace. Your mind is on Jesus. You're praising God. You're witnessing the people. You're now testifying of the things that God has already done. You're bearing witness, witness of the glory of God and the power of God. Oh, hallelujah. And then you tag all of what God has already done and you tag it with what God is doing based on what you're believing and have released your faith for. And now you can say boldly, God is working this thing out so that physically it's going to look like this. Physically, it's going to be like this here. And we're not putting God into a corner and saying, well, God's got to move like one, two, three. No, God, we just thank you that the end result, it'll be like what we pray. Whatever path, whatever you got to do to overcome the enemy, that enemy going to get beat down whichever way he comes trying to stop what God is doing and what we're doing for God. What you're doing for God cannot be stopped when you operate in, in strong and great faith. Impossible. I said impossible. Because as he is, so are we. We believe that. We're expressing that identity with humility, but we're expressing that level of being more than a conqueror, subduing Satan and this world at every encounter at every contest, at every conflict, we're expressing more than conquerorship because that's who we are. It's not what we're trying to come. It's not what we're trying to come, trying to become. That's who we are. And we're just getting better at it. You're getting better at it each and every day. So watch this here. We talk about this identity thing. You are more than a conqueror, not trying to be. So anything you deal with in life, deal with it from this identity mark. You are more than a conqueror. You have to say it like this here. I am more than a conqueror in this situation. I don't care what it looks like. No, I am the head and not the tail. And God is the guarantee to it. Now you go back to God. I don't want to be too redundant, right? You go back to God. You start praising God. You start acting like a child that just got the, the okay from your daddy, God, to rejoice because God is saying, I won't fail you. I'm going to bring this thing to pass. You rejoicing in the midst of it before you actually see it. Hallelujah. That's great faith. And God will not fail you. I said, God, the God we serve will not fail. That kind of expression of identity and faith in the identity of God. Now look at this here. Look at this here. That, that, that word identity not only means one of the attributes or features that makes up or distinguishes an individual. But it also means a feature used to separate distinguishable things into categories. You know, the Bible says we are not of this world. We're not of this world. We in this world, but we're not of this world. We of God's world. We of God's kingdom. So our nature and our attributes and our characteristics, our identity should not be like the world. No, we, we're not weird different. We are sanctified different. We, we are called apart. We are set apart. We different. Our nature is different. Our speech is different. Our, our swag is different. We're not chasing after the world. No. Uh-uh. We chasing after God. And we're manifesting and expressing the identity of God. That's every place. In our workplace, you know what I mean? They see the character and the, ex the excellence. And, and, and when they start commenting on it and start saying how great a job we're doing, how this, we ought to say glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm telling you right now, you got to say, I used to be, I used to be a, a, a marginal, moderate. I used to be an average worker. But now I'm an above average worker because I work to make God pleased first. Then I work to make myself pleased second. Then I work to make y'all pleased third. See, there's an order to this here. And God gets the glory first. And then you look at them and say, I'm glad that my work ethic is benefiting and helping this team, helping us be successful. What? That's a whole identity change. You talk like that at the workplace. You talk like that in the family. You talk like that wherever you go. And I'm telling you right now, them people are going to see that you're different, but not different weird, but different wonderful. Oh, hallelujah. You come into work and you full of the glory and the praise and the magnificence of God. You come into church full, full of the praise, the glory, the magnificence of God. You go into the supermarket full of the praise, the glory, the magnificence of God. Wherever you frequent, you going in there with the identity of God. You going in there with the characteristics of God, the characteristics of Jesus Christ. You don't went into the scriptures and you don't found that joy is a part of that characteristic. Peace is a part of that characteristic. 
encouraging and encouragement is a part of that characteristic boldness is a part of that characteristic that new identity that expression of that identity and god will back every one of us when we express their identity <laughs> I love it. I'm not telling you right now. And, and, and you'll never know how sweet it is till you step out in it. You know what I mean? Step out in it in the areas that you feel comfortable. But remember, you are representing Almighty God. You have been preordained by Almighty God to manifest the character, the identity, the power, the love, the, the compassion of Jesus Christ, the miraculous of Jesus Christ. Okay, look at this here. Let's go look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Number three, a group or a kind so separated. Now, 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 definition number two of identity, features used to separate and distinguish things into categories, categorically. You are a child of God. You a child of God. You sanctified. You made holy. You have the anointing of God in your life, the touch of Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. The touch of God is on your life. That's why you stand out. Come on, tell the truth. You, you ever walk or you go on someplace and then all of a sudden you turn around, and you just see people staring at you. They see the glory of God. They don't understand it. They see the life of God. They see that, that eternal life just coming off, coming through you. They see a courage and a character. They, they, they see truth they see a love they see a peace when we open our mouths and begin to share with them and talk to them about the god that we serve now the world is hurting right now they hurting they looking for an answer and and we have the answer hallelujah and as god begins to prepare opportunities for us to witness opportunities for us to express the identity of god because that's what you're doing you're expressing the identity of god you're learning it you've learned it you understand it, you, you've made peace with it, you've released your faith, God, help me to express Jesus's identity in every area of my life. I'm telling you right now, when people start seeing that, they're gonna start scratching their head, they're gonna be like, what is going on? And you're gonna have to be able to explain to them. I've, 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 I've learned, I, I've, I've, the Bible has broke off some truth to me that I accept and believe and I'm doing it, I'm imitating it. You know, I, I'm imitating, I'm doing it the way I see Jesus do it. You know, I, I, I deal with people, I train people, you know what I mean, and exercise and fitness and stuff like that. And so when I'm teaching them a new technique, you know, a lot of times they wanna do it their way. I said, no, I didn't show you that. I, I, I didn't show you that, do it like this. Cause this is safe, this is efficient, and this will cause your, your, your musculature to develop better. Watch this here. Now, if they don't choose to do it like that, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Sometimes I ask, where are you at? Where are you at? You're not, you're not, you're not in your gym at your house. You're not at the, so the gym. So, no, I'm teaching you perfect technique. Go online, look it up. And then when they do and they start seeing stuff changing for the better, they happy. But you gotta, you gotta, you know what I mean? You gotta lay that foundation of truth. I'm talking fitness truth right now. But when we start talking to people about Bible, biblical truth, we gotta take them to the word and say, no, 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 let me explain to you what's happening. You, you got to understand something. You are learning from the word of God. You are getting truth. You're getting un, listen to me, uninterpreted truth. You're getting straight defined truth. Now you just got to accept it. No, no, don't do it like that. Do it like, do it the way Jesus did it. Jesus becomes our technique. He becomes our way of doing things. He becomes the, the expression of what we can expect. And we've got to have the faith to expect to have the same manifestations that Jesus had, the same outcomes that Jesus had. Now, watch this here. Let's, let's, I got one more definition to deal with concerning identity, actually two. The detectable, number four, this is definition number four. The detectable expression of the action of a gene or group of genes. Now, you gotta understand something, that when we made Jesus the Lord and Savior of our lives, when we accepted Jesus Christ, we accepted the Father, we accepted the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit came to live inside of us. They recreated our nature, okay? This is powerful now. They recreated our nature. That's when we, where we get the term born again. We were born from up above. In other words, we have now the spiritual genes 
of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We now have the spiritual DNA of God. Every time we read the word of God, every time we hear the word of God, we are learning what is inside of us. We are learning what we've been created by. We are learning what we've been created for. And when we gave our lives to Jesus Christ, we experienced an identity change in the spirit. Now, the Bible tells us through the book of Romans, renew your mind and you will prove what is the good the acceptable and the perfect will of God. You know, now Romans lays that out real clear, all right? And so as we're reading this word, as we're studying this word, as we now pull off these characteristics of Jesus in the word of God, when we pull off the characteristics, the likes and dislikes of God in the word of God, in the Bible, and we begin to now make them our likes and dislikes, we begin to now make them our ways and our, you know what I'm saying, our attributes, the glory of God is going to manifest. The power of God is going to manifest. The very miraculous of God is going to manifest because God is interested, vested in your success, in our success. As Christians, God has vested themselves in our success. We represent them. We represent Christianity. We represent victory. We represent what it means to be more than a conqueror. I'm talking about you and me, we, us right now. No matter where our development is, at what stage of development we're at, we are still more than conquerors through Christ Jesus because Jesus loved us. That love was proven by the death on the cross. That love was proven by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That love was proven by Jesus allowing the Father to judge him for us. And we got grace. Man, listen, we covered in the blood. We got the blood. We blood bought, we're blood covered, and we're blood sustained. We done had us a blood transfusion. Talking about being born again, we done taken on the nature of God. We done, we done been cleaned and perfected and made holy in our inmost being, our spiritual essence, our spiritual nature. So now we have the capability of expressing the identity of God. We're learning the identity of God as we get into the Bible, as we break down these words. And it's amazing, but you and I have to allow, we have to allow ourselves to make that choice to express the identity of Jesus Christ. That's a choice. For some people, that's an easy choice. Bro, I love it. When you understand the beginning, and the ending of Jesus, Alpha and Omega, he that is and was and is to come, the Almighty. And in other words, God says, I want you to be and manifest what it means to be Almighty in every situation, every circumstance that you deal with in life. And the only thing that can hinder that is your faith, you believing it or not. You choose to believe it, God's got to make it good. Being almighty in every situation means that you are dominating in every situation. And I'm telling you right now, it's all based on our belief and our choice. Our belief in God, our choice to believe God. Our belief in God and our choice to believe God. You say, but you don't understand, Reverend. Oh, Pastor, you don't understand. Apostle, you don't understand. You don't understand what I'm dealing with. I don't experientially, but I do circumstantially, and our God is above it, and our God can turn it around. Hey, whatever the situation is, if it's in the realm of possibility, and it is governed by the word of God, then God's glory can turn it around. God's power can turn it around. God's wisdom can turn it around. I'm reminded of these 10 lepers. These cats was in a, they was in a pickle. They was in a predicament. But they came hollering out for Jesus, 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 son of David, have mercy on us. And then Jesus says these simple words, go show yourself to the priest. Now, at that statement, in the physical realm, nothing happened. But the Bible says, as they went, as they begin to act on, respond to, and accept the words, the truth of Jesus, as they went, as soon as they put motion and action to what Jesus said, based on what they believed about Jesus, as they went, the Bible says they were healed. Standing right there in that moment, they were healed spiritually, 
but physically it had not caught up. But as they were going to the priest, following the instructions of Jesus, as they were going, they all noticed, oh, all of our leprosy is gone. God is working in your situation, all your leprosy, all of those things that's trying to separate you from manifesting the identity of Jesus, the identity of the Father the identity of the Holy Spirit, they're being absolutely eradicated from your life. They're being removed by the power and the pressure of the glory of God manifesting through your life. Now, don't be like the mother nine. They don't went on about their business. They don't went, enjoyed the healing of God. They enjoy now the blessings of God because now they're reunited to society. They can function and operate and increase and walk in the blessings of God. Don't be like them nine that just did that. Be like that one that returned. There was one out of those 10 that came back and started glorifying Jesus, started thanking the Lord, just blessing the Lord. Oh, God, thank you. Hallelujah. Jesus looks up and says, uh, where the other nine? Mm -hmm. Hey, don't be like one of those that just get the blessing. Go enjoy the blessing without coming back and checking in with Jesus, checking in with the Father, checking in with the Holy Spirit and saying thank you. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm telling you, right. see, that's an identity change. That's an identity change. So we're literally going to say to God, God, change our identity, do a thorough job in us, show us the truth so that we can now accept it and then express it. Now watch this here. The, the, the fifth and the last definition of that word identity. Now remember, you got the genes of God in you. You got the DNA of God in you through the new birth. You got born again. A supernatural miracle took place. The nature, your nature was changed. Yeah, we still got to contend with the flesh. We still got to control the flesh and deny the flesh. Okay? We got to deny those thoughts that come in that want to express through the flesh. We got to accept the thoughts of God that come in. That means we're going to change some things. We're going to change our ways. And when we do, now we're expressing. We're expressing the very identity of Jesus Christ. And again, in a nutshell, the expression of Jesus Christ brings victory in every area of life. Every area of life that we choose. Look at this here. Last definition. The complex of mental and ethical traits marking and often individualizing a person, group, or a nation. Listen, as we all embrace this word, I'm talking about Christians now, as we all, I'm biblical Christians, born again Christians, I'm talking about St. John chapter 3, Christian. Except the man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Been born from above. That word born again means born from above. So except we be born from above, from God, we can't enter into the kingdom of God. But then more than that, except we be born again, we cannot manifest this complex of mental and ethical traits marking and often individualizing us from the world. We are not of this world. We are different from this world. So watch this here. As you and I begin to express the identity of Jesus Christ, all of the changes that that brings, you remember, you sanctified, you holy, you a child of God. Oh yeah, you a church boy, you a church girl. We're going to be proud of that because it is that that distinguishes us. No, not being weird, not being judgmental, not being, you know what I'm saying? No, we're not doing that. But when we get around them, let me tell you something. Worldly folks is proud of their worldliness. Let me say this. Worldly folks are proud of their worldliness. And they will only be proud of their worldliness until they understand that their worldliness is expressed satanicness. Let me say that again now. Worldly people are proud of their worldliness until somebody like you or me in the love of God help them to understand that what they call normal, their worldliness is satanic expression. Now we got a job to do to let them know you're expressing Satan's nature right now. You're expressing Satan's will right now. And that is not pleasing to God. And it's really vexing to me right now. Oh, you better than us. No, I used to be just like that. But I've been born again. 
Jesus is doing a work in my life. I'm not your judge. I don't think I'm better than you. But the nature that's in me and the nature that's in you, it's in conflict right now. I don't mean negative conflict like we're going to go to blows or like I hate you, but it's vexing. Uh, and when I say vexing, it, it, it really grieves my heart. Now, I used, to, I used to get down like that until I got a nature change and started renewing my mind. And, I, I, you know, it, it really, it pains me. So, you know what I mean? If, if, can you refrain from that? And most of them, if they have any respect for God, even if they're not living for God, they will try to dial it back. But the ones that like, that's like really like chest deep in Satan's expression, they, they ain't gonna respect God. They ain't gonna respect the God in you. They're not gonna respect you. They just gonna do them. So when we meet people like that, throw the word on them. I didn't say condemn them, but when they talking satanic rhetoric, we start quoting scriptures. Not to beat them down, not to put them in judgment, but we start speaking. You know, our God is an awesome God. If you knew our God, God is a loving God. You know, God loves you. God created you for a better purpose than what you're expressing. You have a right to express that purpose, but I'm telling you why. You know what I mean? I mean, however God lays on your heart to put the word of God to put some fresh Holy Spirit life and knowledge into that conversation. You know what I'm saying? Because all they talking is death. All they talking is, is, is self. All they talking is that, you know what I mean, that glorifies the enemy. And as a child of God, expressing the identity of Jesus, we got to understand something. We're there to bring, you know what I mean, godly influence, godly expression, and godliness to their satanicness. Now, I know that sounds harsh, but that is what they need. They, that's what they need. They don't know it. They may fight you over it, but that's what they need to get free from Satan's, you know what I mean, ability. Look at this here. Okay. The complex mental and ethical traits. So when we renew our mind, it's going to also impact and change our ethics, how we do things, how we deal with stuff, how we respond to stuff. That's a powerful thing. Talking about identity. All right, so watch this here. Go with me real quick. I want to read this here, and I want you to just kind of listen to this. This is powerful. This is what Jesus prayed to the Father for every believer. Let's read this here. And I'm going to start at verse 13. I'm going to read down to 22. I'm going to do my best not to expound. I'm just going to go ahead and read. Then we'll come back with a little bit of time that we have left. Look at this here. St. John, I'm in St. John, chapter 17, verses 13 through 22. Now, St. John is right after Luke. If you look at it in the New Testament, you know what I mean? After Luke. So St. John 17, 13, verse 20 through verse 22. Look at this here. Verse 13. This is Jesus talking to the Father. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them, talking about us, I have given them thy word. Also talking about the world but he's speaking to the Christians specifically and speaking specifically to his disciples, okay? So there's, there's a lot of layers to this. From the context, he's speaking to his disciples. He's talking to the Father God, but he's speaking about the 11 apostles. All right, let's read. That. That's a little backdrop because we sometimes we need some context, all right? Okay, I have given, now, and I said to the world, but you know what I mean? How many know we're bringing this word to the world, okay? Amen. Everybody in it. Okay, so watch this here. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Verse 16. Look at this. It gets better. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Through the truth. Neither pray I 
for these alone, talking about the, the 11, neither do I pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's you and I. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. When the, when the, when the world sees the Christ identity, the identity of Jesus Christ manifesting in your life, literally expressing itself in your life, they're going to believe that the Father sent Jesus. Do you understand the position that we have? Do you understand the position that you have? Every verse you share with somebody, every change that's taking place in your life, expressing the identity of Jesus Christ, every blessing you've received, every prayer that you've gotten answered, literally Jesus says is a witness to the world that the Father sent Jesus to the world. Look at this, look at this last verse. And the glory which thou gavest me, listen, I have given them. Wait a minute, let me repeat that one again. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. Hey, let me just tell you, identity-wise, you've been given the glory of God. Now, we've been dealing with this word glory. You know, on our Sunday message, you need to YouTube and just, you know what I mean, and, and, and look up uh, Psalms 108, Zamar. King David says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to awake early and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to worship and praise God with my glory. Now, I don't have time to break that down. I want to touch this just a little bit. But God has given you glory, the same glory that Jesus walked in. God has put it in you. When you got born again, when you committed your life to Jesus, you and I, we, us, we got the glory of God in us. We're allowing the knowledge of God to bring us to a place and a confidence and an identity, a distinguishable identity, a separating identity that we walk in the glory of God, that we are identifying and expressing the very glory, the very courage, the boldness, the, the, the very more than conquerorship of Jesus Christ. Let's, let's read these verses, all right? I, I got like four minutes. Stay with me. Don't go nowhere yet. Stay with me. Hold on. Look at this here. Okay, look at this here. Verse 13. I'm gonna just going to I'm gonna paraphrase off the top. Look at this here. And now I come to thee, talking to the Father, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. God's speaking this stuff in the midst of Satan's kingdom. Speaking it to those that'll believe. The original 11, plus we who are believing because of what they've preached and what they experienced with Jesus, talking to us about Jesus. Verse 14, I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them. Listen, because we are walking in the truth of God's word and we begin to express it, the world's not gonna necessarily be happy. And the reason why the world, you may run across some people that's not happy with your expression of the new birth and the, the character and identity of Jesus is because either they have not gotten born again or they've gotten born again and they've stalled out. They've stopped wanting to grow. So when you stop wanting to grow, and this is what we got to tell them, when you stop wanting to grow with God, now you put a shackle on God. And now every time somebody grows beyond your current level of growth, it's a, it's a source of agitation, irritation, okay? And, and that irritation can grow to hatred and all of that. And the problem is not the individual that's grown beyond a certain level where people have stopped, the problem is they have stopped growing. They, they, they've gotten to a place where, you know, they don't want no more, but not us. We want more. We want more of the expression of God in our lives. So watch this here. I have given them thy, world, thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now, straight up ungodly folks, when you come on the scene, bringing the word of God, they either gonna love you or they're gonna hate you. And it doesn't matter if they have and harbor feelings of hate, as long as that hate doesn't become physical, we're good. Hate me, but God loves me. This has gotta be your attitude. This comes with the identity. We don't want people to hate us and we definitely don't wanna do things antagonistic. You know, we don't wanna come there, you know what I mean, beating them over the head with the word, you know what I mean, to, to get them all angry and rebellious. 
But we want to come in and say, hey, wait a minute now, I, I'm not that kind of Christian, all right? You got a right to choose your destiny. But let me tell you how good it is. Let me tell you how good God has made it. You know what I mean? If you, if you, if you pick up God's formula, you can go through every process of life victorious over Satan, and he's your enemy. Oh, man, that's some good stuff. Look at verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. Hey, he's not taking us out of the world because we got a job to do. If we don't bring the truth of God to this world, if you and I, if we don't bring the truth of God to the situation, no matter how the people in the situation respond, they may respond with hatred, they may respond with resistance or rebellion, but we still got to bring that word because remember, the word will overpower that rebellion. The word will overpower that resistance. It all depends on how we bring it. And if we bring it from a heart of love, if we bring it from a heart of compassion, if we bring it from a heart of humility, I've been there, done that. I know exactly where you are. Satan just got his hands on you. He's just trying to choke you out. I come here as a friend, as help to bring you the truth of God. I'm coming here as a representative of God, and I'm coming here to let you know God don't hate you, but God's trying to help you. You know, that changes the whole thing if you're dealing with reasonable people. All right, look at this here. Verse 16. And, and before we go to verse 16, he says, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. Hey, what that means is all of what Satan wants to do to you can't be done. Because you got to keep her. You got to shepherd. That means all of what Satan's children want to do to you, they can't because you're standing in the word of God and you're standing in the name of Jesus. You're standing on the authority of God. But see, you got to embrace that and then express it. You, you, you know, this is not an arrogant statement. Look, if you come against me, you're coming against God Almighty. If you don't know who he is, let me explain it to you. He's the one that split the Red Sea for Moses and the children of Israel. He's the one that helped King David kill Goliath. I'm telling you right now, if you come against me, something bad is going to happen to you. And it's not going to be me. Don't, don't say, oh, they threatened me. No, I'm telling you, the God I serve will get you because I'm that valuable to God. You say, how in the world can you utter those words out your mouth, Apostle Haynes? Because God cares for his. Now, he's going to cut them some slack if they change. But if they don't change, God's going to get them. And you need to tell them, God will get you. So that when crazy stuff starts jumping off in their life, they know why it's jumping off. Because they came against an authentic, true identity changed Christian. I'm telling you, if you're scared to talk like that, God will never fight for you like that. You say, but God is a God of love. Yes, he's a God of love for his children. He's a God of love for those that obey. He's a God of love for those that are willing. But for those that are resisting him, God will take his hands off them and let them turn into reprobates. You need to read Romans. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that may make you go like, oh, God, just be glad that it's not you that'll get that type of, of anger and dealing from God. But I'm telling you right now, listen, God is coming with love and mercy and all that, but you know, God is still a God of judgment. And I'm telling you right now, when you walk in and valuable to God, when people, when the devil send folk your way to try to steal, come, destroy you, and you look at them and say, let me tell you something right now. You know my nature. You know my character. I'm not going to get down and get ugly with you. All right. I'm not going to get ugly with you. I can, if you push the right combination, I'll get down and get up here with you. But if I stay true to operating according to my faith in Jesus Christ, God will let something very bad happen to you. And I'm going to tell you right now, the way you acted, God will let something bad. You will, you will open the door for the devil. You will open the door for, for, for godly judgment. You won't get out of this week before your stuff starts falling apart in your life. Because you ain't listening to God anyhow. You attacking me. This is going to be you talking to these enemies that won't yield to God. I know this sounds crazy. This sounds way to the left. But I'm telling you, we walk in that kind of strength and power. We walk in that kind of relationship. The Bible says that you walk in a place where the wicked one touches you not. And that means when he's using his people to come at you, you got to look at them and say, that'll never happen. And God will come in there and you will get your life tipped upside down coming against me. Let me give it to you from Abraham's understanding of what God says. God says, Abraham, those that bless you, I'll bless them. Those that curse you, I'll curse them. He says, Abraham, I called you to be a blessing, not a curse. That's us. 
we are called to be a blessing to people and not a curse. And how do we bless them? We bless them by sharing with them the word of God, the encouragement, the blessings of God. But when they turn ugly and they turn satanic, we let them know something bad is going to happen to you. You don't believe me. You read in the book of Corinthians. Now, this is Christians now. This is Christians. There was a guy that was doing a sin that was just absolutely deplorable. And Paul said, look, I don't know why y'all have not dealt with this guy. He done did something that is so foul. He got married to his mother-in-law, his father's wife. Paul says, y'all are rejoicing in this and y'all should be shaming of yourselves. He says, why haven't y'all turned this person over to the devil for the destruction of their flesh so that their spirit and soul may be saved? We're going to deal with that in the future. But that's some serious authority and some serious power to walk in. Listen, Paul said to the book of Rome, in the book of Romans, to the Roman church, he says, look, he says, you know, these folks that's, that knew God and they turned their back on God and now they wilding out and acting crazy. He says, listen, God going to turn them and just take his hand off them and, and, and let a reprobate mind get a hold to them and they're going to be destroyed in all of their craziness and foolishness. You say, well, how do you get out of all of those two stories that if somebody comes against you, God going to get them? Because Jesus said, if they do it to me, they doing it to him. So I'm like, God, you going to stand up for this? You know, somebody come against me real ugly. I'm like, God, you going to stand up for this? You need to deal with them. Lord, I'm asking you, please deal with them before I have to deal with them. I don't want to have to deal with them. I'm going to let you deal with them. I'm telling you right now, it's all through the scriptures. It's all through the scriptures. All right, look at this here. They are not of the world, verse 16, even as I am not of the world, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I sent them also into the world. Verse 19, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified through the truth. You and I, we are sanctified through the truth. I know this is, this is, whoa, hold on. The Bible says that you and I are ordained to walk in a place where the wicked one touches us not, but it takes faith. It takes, it takes trust in God, accepting God's identity and truth to walk into that realm. You say, well, I know some people that got beat down. I don't know where their faith was. I don't know what they were taught about the word of God, but I know I'm trusting God. You are, mm, mm, no. You say, have you ever prayed that? A couple of times. You say, has it ever worked? all the time. Will it work for me? Absolutely. You know why? You don't have to be special to have this work for you. You just have to be sanctified by the truth. You just got to be born again. You got to know your authority and you got to know your rights in Jesus Christ. These people keep running up on you, disrespecting you and all that. Wait a minute. They, they disrespect you. They disrespecting God. You not God. This is how people get all stupid and twisted. Oh, you say to them, you disrespect me. You disrespect the God I serve. You disrespecting God. Oh, you God now? No, I'm not God. I'm a child of God. Something bad going to happen to you in Jesus' name. You watch. You say you can't sit God on people like that. You can't sit God on Christians like that. But Paul says, turn them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. You say, well, did it happen? No, because the guy repented and got it right with God. Oh, there's some stuff in this Bible that we're learning, that we're learning how to operate, that we're learning how to break down. And I'm telling you right now, some, for some folks, this is unpalatable. It's like, oh my God, this, this doesn't fit my religion. I know, because this is Bible. Oh, that's you making that up. Search the scriptures yourself. It's in there. But who's walking like that? Who's kicking it out like that? Not too many. Most people are afraid to talk like this, especially to their enemies. Look at this here. Neither pray I for these alone. This is what I love about this here particular passage. Neither do I pray for these alone, talking about the 11, but I also pray for them which shall believe on me through their word. Oh, what they wrote? I'm believing. Look at this here, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now, I'm really saying to God, 
God, open my understanding to this. I need to walk in this. You start walk, you start walking in verse 21 in its fullness, you different individual. You manifest in a whole different level of identity and courage and boldness and miraculous expression and response from God. That's why these guys, man, these guys, after hearing all of this from God, you know, Peter putting handkerchiefs on his body and Paul, you know what I mean? These cats, these cats walked in power and we are resurrecting the faith through the knowledge of the word to walk in some serious power in these last of the last days. You stand out, you are the light of the world. You stand out, you shine as bright lights because of the word of God. You're sanctified through the truth of God's word. You stand apart. You've been separated. This is some powerful stuff right here. Look at this here, last verse. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. You have been, I have been, we have been given the glory of God to unite with God. We've been given the glory of God, the same glory that the Father gave to Jesus. Jesus gave it to us. We got it. It's not something that we're trying to acquire. We already have it. We're trying to understand the scope and the depth of it. And when we start now digging into these truths, and unwrapping these truths. Some of these truths is kind of like, oh, we never heard it like this. So it's foreign to us. And our first reaction can be, I didn't say it is, can be, I don't believe it. It's too good to be true. I remember back when I was, I was a junior in college, okay? I'm talking, I'm talking back March 1920s when I rededicated my life back to Jesus Christ. But around about May, June, I, 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 was, I was blessed by God, by the grace of God, to, to, to have hung out with some really, really powerful Christians. They wasn't perfect, but they was powerful in the knowledge of God. These cats in college, these cats was breaking out Greek and Hebrew. These cats was praying every day for like 45 minutes to an hour every morning before going to class. These cats was in church Wednesday night. They was in church Sunday morning. These cats was on fire. That's what I came up in. Then I went to Bible school. But I remember five months in, by May, I'm reading the scriptures. I done went through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm scratching my head wondering why they're telling the same story over and over. I was a biblical illiterate. I didn't know no scripture, but I had gone to church almost, you know, most of my life up until around about age. 11, when my, when my parents that raised me didn't make me go anymore. They used to make me go. I didn't want to go. But in college, I'm introduced, God approaches me again, and, and, and these guys, they was on it. They breaking down these words like I'm doing to you right now. They breaking these words down, right? And so I remember by the time I got through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, this thought hit me. This is too good to be true. My point is this. When you begin to hear the word broke down and you start hearing all of the subjects that you haven't heard and now you embrace them and you make them a part of the tapestry of your knowledge and your experience with God and it, it seems like this is too good to be true. You know, God will protect me like that. That's too good to be true. God will protect you like that. God will advance you like that. God will literally set you in the middle of all of your enemies and you will feast on the word of God and they can't touch you. The little schemes and plots they have against you, it will backfire in their face. I'm gonna pull some scriptures out next time we get together because I'm running out of my time. But I'm gonna pull some scriptures together where the Bible says when you catch a thief or you catch somebody doing something wild that you can now make them recompense sevenfold. And we can apply that not only physically, but spiritually in the principles when you're dealing with Satan's people that are dastardly and think they bold enough to run up on a child of God. You know, in the world today, you know what I mean? The world, you know what I mean, looks at, and I'm going to talk about born again Christians. I'm going to talk about we that are Protestant, born again, got a relationship with Jesus Christians. You know what I mean? The world don't respect us like it used to. Back 60 years ago, the world had respect for the church. We, the world, the world don't respect the church 
like it used to respect the church. Okay, and, and, and there's a reason why we're not gonna deal with that right now. But, but God is regathering, God is restructuring, God is retraining. And there's a, there's a remnant that's rising up. You were part of that. There's a remnant that's rising up that loves truth that understands that the truth is what separates us, that sanctifies us, that sets us apart. It's not hairdos and coverings and all of that kind of stuff, no. It's the truth that we embrace, it's the truth that we identify with. That's what sets us apart. And God will back their truth. All right, I'm gonna leave right there. We're gonna come back and touch this again. But I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna throw you some scriptures that let you know that you got power with God and those that attack you, it's like they're attacking God. We got to let them know. If we don't let them know that, if they just think that all they're doing is attacking you, all they're doing is creating drama in your life, man, listen, you letting them off the hook. Let them know. Introduce them to your God. And then your God going to go and talk to them and say, look, leave that one alone. Don't mess with that one. That one ain't, no, that one is valuable to me. I will come and deal with you. Oh, you don't think this is true? Ask the Apostle Paul. Before the Apostle Paul became the Apostle Paul, he was Saul of Tarsus. And Saul of Tarsus had a reputation as a Christian killer. And he so devastated and caused such an interruption in the church that Jesus Christ himself got off the throne, went down and interrupted Saul's journey to Damascus. And Jesus got off the throne and went down. This is in the book of Acts. You got to read it for yourself. You know what I mean? It, Jesus said, look, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? Saul says, who, who, who are you, Lord? Now, he called him Lord because Saul ain't never been knocked off his horse like that. You got some enemies that's about to get knocked off their horse. And you need to tell them, Jesus is going to come and see you because you're creating some major devastation and disruption in my life and in my flow. I don't know if that, I, I guarantee, I don't know. There's no scriptures that the saints was praying that God deal with Saul, but I, I just believe in my heart. They was praying, God, you got to deal with this cat because he disrupted the whole church. And watch this here. Jesus meets Saul on the road to Damascus and gave him an ultimatum. And this is how God gets down. I'm telling you, God gets down. God will deal with your enemies. You got to say, look, if you keep messing with me, something bad is going to happen to you. God going to come and visit you, and he's going to give you a choice. He's going to say, leave him alone, or you're going to get dealt with. That's what God did to Saul. God says, you persecuting me. Who are you that I'm persecuting? Lord, Jesus says, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. Who was, who was Saul persecuting? He's persecuting the church. Killing them, lining them up, getting them ready for death. Trying to punk them into recanting and saying, okay, we don't believe in Jesus. We want to live. We want. Jesus says these words to Saul. It's hard for you to keep doing what you're doing and thinking that you're going to live another day. Now you're going to choose today. You're going to stop persecuting me and you're going to stop persecuting my church or I'm gonna kill you right where you stand. Now the choice is yours. What are we gonna do from here? You know, what, you, know what, you know what Saul did? Saul humbled himself because he now realized that the early church Christians wasn't playing church. They meant what they was believing and they believed what they meant and they was believing God, they was believing Jesus, they was believing the Father, they saw Jesus, they saw it, they had a personal experience with the very truth of God in the earth, they saw and heard, and God says, with that kind of faith, that kind of conviction, that kind of love that they have for me, that kind of belief, Jesus came down off the throne and said, Saul, what are we going to do here? And y'all know the story. Saul got converted, he got born again. And Saul was all out for Jesus. Some of these folk that's coming against you, you need to let them know. I'm telling you, God gonna come and talk to you and he's gonna give you an ultimatum. You won't even get past three days. I promise you, because I'm gonna be praying for three days that God come and just talk to you. I'm gonna ask God to destroy you. I'm not gonna ask God to kill you, but I'm gonna ask God to deal with you. But I'm gonna ask God to give you an ultimatum. And in three days, it's gonna happen.
All right. You got power with God. And as you begin to learn more about your identity in God, as you begin to allow God's word to reshape your thinking, talking, behavior, or your expression of the identity of God, of God God's going to back that change, that sanctification, that expression with the full weight of the glory, the power, and the abilities of God. You're special to God because you walk in the identity of God. You're expressing that identity. And get ready for unparalleled victory more than conquering. It's been great to share this time with you. Great to share this word with you. Well, my time is all gone till we get together again. Who remember, he's with you. He's keeping you from the evil one. And he sanctified you through the truth. You have a brand new identity that you're expressing for the glory of God. Expect the promise of God to become your physical reality. My name is Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. It's been a pleasure. Until we meet again, till we get at this word again, may God bless you and keep you. Shalom.